let me explain today's program. A few months ago, we uploaded a video on our YouTube channel called All About K. It's a question and answer show on Korean culture, sports, and tourism. If you haven't watched the video, go check out the video in our Korea.net YouTube channel. Before taking that video, we uh, requested our social media followers to ask any questions they had about Korea. And uh, we received so many good questions. In fact, almost 200 comments. And uh, they were not all answered in the previous video. We've only answered six questions before. And we felt that it would be a shame to let them go to waste. So in today's program, another six questions, two for each of the topic, culture, sports, and tourism, will be answered. Some of the questions will be answered by our special guests. Are you excited to know who the special guests are? You'll see them soon. Shall we move on to the questions then? Let's begin answering questions from our first topic, Korean culture. What are some Korean vocabularies that show Korean culture? I had so many vocabularies to explain to all of you, but I decided to choose one that is most frequently asked by my foreign friends, which is Gangnam Style. Gangnam Style. You probably know the song Gangnam Style by Sai. We all know the song, but do you know the meaning what Gangnam Style actually is? What does it mean for an oppa, an elder man, to be Gangnam Style? Let's see if anyone knows what Gangnam Style is. Cassie Q, did you mean Gangnam Style means Hallyu? Hall yeah, it's a part of Hallyu, but I want to be more um, specific about what Gangnam Style means. And uh, Gang in Korean means river. And there's a very significant symbolic river that flows in Seoul. The name of the river is Hangang. Surely you must have heard of Hangang, right? Hangang River. And Hangang River cuts across Seoul horizontally. And you might have noticed if you visited Korea before, especially Seoul, you can also see in the map that uh, Gyeongbokgung Palace, old and historic buildings are all located in the northern part of the river. Oh, we have those roof tiles. Um, they're all in the northern part. And then in contrast, in the southern part of the, of the river, uh, there are a lot of modern skyscrapers. For instance, um, do you know Lotte World Tower? It's a relatively recently built building. It's also the sixth tallest building in the world. Lotte World Tower is located in the southern part of Hangang River in Seoul. So by Upang Gangnam style, Gangnam, the district is Gang is river and Nam is south. It refers to an area that's modern and posh, and Sai Oppa was probably trying to boast about his wealth and trendiness. Flirty and fancy, someone said flirty and fancy. That could be so. If you're rich, you could be flirty and fancy too, right? <laughs> well, uh, we had a lot of good answers, and we'll move on to the next question. Number two, how do Koreans enjoy dessert? Dessert, I love dessert, and for this question, we're going to have someone young and trendy. Eugene, our new English intern. Everyone welcome Eugene. Welcome Hi. Eugene to our uh, All About K live show. Please sit a little bit closer okay. to me so that we look like friends. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you know that our question is, how do Koreans enjoy dessert? Do you like desserts? Yeah, I love desserts. Oh. Do you know what is sohakeng? Sohakeng, oh, it's a, it's a word that's used between young people these days, right? Yeah, it is small but certain happiness. My sohakeng, mm. small but certain happiness, is going for a coffee and dessert. Oh, nice, yeah. nice. That's always healing. Mm. And I think it is also, many Koreans also go to cafe mm -hmm. for a coffee and desserts also. For those of you who have been to Korea will know there are so many kinds of desserts you can enjoy. But today I would like to introduce one of the unique desserts. Just one? Yeah. Oh. Only one. <laughs> one Too of bad. the unique desserts mm -hmm. you can see in Korea. Can you guess? Amazing. Is it like a summer dessert? Oh yeah. Type of ice cream? Yeah. It is called 
Bingsu. Ah, bingsu! Yeah. I love bingsu. Oh, we have pictures of delicious bingsu. We have yeah. strawberry bingsu. Bingsu means Korean ice shaped dessert. Korean ice, ice shaped, shaped dessert. Mm -hmm. It's the most popular summer dessert in Korea. Yeah. yeah, in summertime, I think so, yeah. yeah. And it also became quite international, too. Oh, yeah, I've seen some bingsu stores in Southeast Asian countries, too. Oh. Bingsu has endless diversity combined with various kinds of ingredients and mm -hmm. toppings. A lot of toppings. Yeah. This one I think is mango, mango. bingsu. Mm. So if you visit Korea someday, I would strongly recommend you to try bingsu to cool down the summer heat in Korea. Oddly, bingsu, although it's a summer dessert, it tends to be enjoyed all four seasons. Yeah. Maybe we have so much anger in ourselves and we have to <laughs> cool it down. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe right. Oh, someone mentioned Dalgona coffee. So mm. last year, making Dalgona coffee went viral on SNS. Oh, yes. Yeah, so, oh, yes, it did. Oh, you have to use a lot of arm muscles yeah. to make the cream of it, right? Yeah. Have you ever tried it? Uh, I haven't tried it, but I've seen DJ Hana and Minji make Dalgona oh, coffee in the no. office. Do you remember the video? Yeah, they had a very difficult time making that. Yeah, it's so difficult. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever tried making it? Yeah, I've tried once, but it became a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to make it. Um, oh. Well, thank you, Eugene, for explaining the young trend of Korean desserts. You. Uh, having you here was a great support. It wouldn't have been this refreshing without you. No. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank I'll see you. you again. Thank you. Thank you. And we've answered two questions for a culture section. And now it's time for a prize winning pop quiz. This one is on dating tips, love and relationship. Gotta love that topic. So the question of the pop quiz is, where is the place that couples in Korea would not go to, would avoid going to? Number one is Ensoul Tower. Number two is Gyeongbokgung Palace. Number three, Doksugung Stonewall Road, Doksugung Dolamgil. Number four, Yeosu Night Sea, Yeosu Bampada. Number five, Lotte World. In all four seasons, this place is beautiful. In spring, there's cherry blossoms. And in, uh, in autumn, of course, the autumn foliage is red and yellow leaves. And in winter, there's snowflakes. It's a beautiful place to go to. I actually go there in lunch break uh, for a walk with a coffee. Oh, oh, someone's got the right answer. Congratulations, Ilhom. Rice, Saliza, the answer was number three, Doksugung Stonewall Road, Doksugung Doldamgi. The reason why Stonewall Road is the place that you should not go to is because of an urban myth that says couples who walk this road cannot escape the fate of breakup. And this is because uh, it's related to the history of having uh, lots of law courts for divorce in the area. So people think that this road is cursed because of uh, the spirits who's divorced in this area. So be careful if you're um, visiting Seoul, try not to go to Doksugung Doldamgil with your lover. Okay, now, should we move on to the next section? The next section will be joined by Pyongyong, another English intern who probably knows a lot more about sports than I do. I'm not that athletic, unfortunately. So, um, Pyongyong, please come over. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Could you briefly introduce yourself to us before you answer our question on sports? So, hello, everyone. I'm NewKorea.net English intern Pyongyong. It's really good to see you. Hello, everyone. It's nice to see some, um, uh, someone who's more uh, expertized in sports than I am. The third question that we had for sport is, who are the most popular athletes in Korea? So do you have any idea who the most popular athletes in Korea are? Well, Son Heung-min, the football player, has been the most beloved athletes in Korea for recent three consecutive years. Son Heung-min, we have the Very picture, nice, yes. ah, the football player. 
Yes, he is seen as the pride of Korean football as he shines in the English Premier League. Whoa, English Premier League. And as for baseball, Ryu h y n j i n the pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays, Ryu h y n j i n yes, has turned out to be the fifth most popular athlete mm -hmm. in Korea. And as for the female athlete, Uh -huh. Kim Hyun Ah, the Olympic gold medal. Ah, oh, I knew it. It's Kim Hyun Ah. Yes. Kim Hyun Ah has to come out, yeah. yeah. She remains as the second most popular sports player in Korea. Nice. I've actually expected Son Heung Min and Ryu Hyun Jin and Kim Hyun Ah to come out. They're very famous in Korea, but not only in Korea but worldwide. They're quite famous. Um, but then I always. Hope that we had someone that would know about esports. I think esports is becoming international day by day, and there's an immense um, uh, fan club for esports player as well. I think, right? Yes, right. Do you know anything about esport athletes? Yeah, of course. Well, love for esports in Korea is originated from the game StarCraft, which was a huge sensation in the late 1990s. Starcraft, yes. mm -hmm. and the king of Starcraft, Im y o a n also known as the Slayer's Boxer, was invited by the Blue House. Slayer's Boxer, yes, uh -huh. and is recorded as the first esports gamer to meet the president. First esports gamer ever to meet the president. Wow, that's that's something to be proud of. Yeah, he mm -hmm. must be proud. Well, thank you, Pyongyang. I think I've. Also heard of the player Fake, or do you know about him? Yeah, also, yeah, also he is the most popular esports game right now, and he is playing the game League of Legend. League of Legend. Yes. Lol, <laughs> lol. Yeah, also known as lol. Yes. And uh, such computer game has now evolved into a type of international sports. That's amazing, right? Yes, and that's thanks for the Im y o a n who mm. I mentioned before, because. As he visited the president, the president mm -hmm. started to recognize esports as a new type of sports. Mm -hmm. As he visited him, so the president thinks that this is a good way of, um, for instance, releasing, relieving stress. A new type of industry, I guess. Mm, oh, it's also yeah, good it's for the economy for yeah, Korea right. as well, right? Uh, well, thank you, Pyongyang, for the answers. If it weren't for you, I would have never answered a question on esports. Here at Create Art and Head, so thank you so much. Thank you. And and, uh, 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 and uh, maybe you can show me how to do some esports later on. Let's go to PC Bang. I think I'll be good at playing games. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> well, thank you for being here, and we'll have to say goodbye for now. Okay. Thanks for having me. And hi, everyone. Bye, Myung Myung. Thank you. Now I'll be all alone to answer the questions. But we will move on to the next question. What are the top favorite sports for women? Um, did you know that we have a lot of women followers at Create.net account? Uh, more than 80% of our followers are women, so I think this is the reason why we got this question. Due to the COVID-19 situation currently, uh, there are many restrictions for indoor sport activity. And so as an alternative, hiking is considered as a healthy way of overcoming corona blues. Um, Korea, some of you may already know, is very blessed to have mountains and great hiking trails in almost every city. Um, you might have also noticed that a lot of middle-aged to senior women, they go for hiking. They are uh, also very big fans of hiking gears all across the world. As for younger women, Pilates seems to be one of the most popular sport activities. Although it's considered as slightly costly, um, it's become popular for a lot of office workers. I haven't tried it out yet, but um, you know, when you work for a long time, then your neck turns out to be like a turtle, and your waist also kind of gets curved. So, for people who are not very happy with their posture, they want to correct it by taking Pilates classes. Now we're done with two questions of sport, and it's time for a pop quiz again. This time on food and situation combination. Are you ready? Which of the following food and situation is not natural for Koreans? It's not natural. So we have five here. Four of them are natural food and situation combinations. Just one is awkward. Which one is the awkward one? Number one is p a d o n vegetable pancake, and m a k o l i rice wine on a rainy day. Number two, p 
Hot bingsu, remember bingsu, the answer uh, that Eugene prepared, Korean ice-shaped dessert. Pot is a sweet red bean sauce on top of the ice-shaped dessert. Pot bingsu, after a breakup. And number three, Jajangmyeon. Jajangmyeon is a black sauce noodle, Chinese fusion styled noodle after moving to a new house. Number four is Hejangkuk to overcome hangover. And number five, Yot, sticky taffy, Korean sticky taffy before taking a big exam. Which combination is the one that's not natural? Congratulations, Advocast. It is right. Number two, poppings after a breakup is the food and situation combination that is not natural for Korean people. Although while making this question, I thought that this is quite logical, you know. Um, after you break up, you're angry, you have like heat in your body. And if you have um, ice dessert after a breakup, then it can get away the anger. So it kind of makes sense, no? Maybe someday it might become a general trend in Korea. <laughs> we'll see. Now it's the time for the last section. This is actually my favorite section. It's tourism. There are so many uh, touristy places that I would like to recommend to you. But for the question, uh, they are more uh, specialized in which tourist places I should recommend. And question five is, where are some tourist spots recommended to visit in autumn? Are you planning a trip, a trip to Korea in autumn? If you are, you are very smart because autumn is indeed the best season to visit Korea. I would say even if you are just in Seoul, you would be able to see the autumn leaves. But um, since a lot of you are already very familiar with Seoul, I would like to recommend you a place that you might not have heard before. It's a city named Yeongju, and Yeongju is in Gyeongsangbuk-do province. There are several UNESCO cultural heritage in Yeongju. There is a Busoksa temple, and Busoksa temple, which was built in Silla era, was strongly recommended by a famous Korean history teacher to visit in autumn with someone you love. On the way up, to the top of Busoksa Temple, uh, it takes uh, 20 to 30 minutes to walk there. And uh, there's a road that's made out of um, autumn leaves. Um, the tunnel consists of all those yellow and red colors of autumn leaves. And it's so romantic that uh, you just have to go with your lover to um, feel the romantic vibe there. Now it's time for the last question, which is the most beautiful beach in Korea. The question was personally very difficult for me to answer because I'm a heavy, heavy, heavy beach lover. I love beach so much to the extent that I kind of enjoy smelling rotten fish with a little bit of exaggeration. And it's a true blessing to be living in a peninsula country where all three seasides of Korea have their own unique and attractive characteristics. The western coast uh, of Incheon City is perfect for watching the sunset and consuming some high quality grilled shrimps and clams. Also, if you have children, if you are um, with a lot of family members, I would like to recommend you to go for a mud flat experience in the western coast. Um, you can dig up as many clams as you want. It will, uh, if you dig up the clams, I. From what I know, you can take all of them and you can dig up as many and for as long as you want to. But personally, from my experience, uh, it didn't go over two hours because it gets so muddy and tiring. And then uh, I'll move on to the eastern coast now. The eastern coast in Gangwon-do province is different from western coast because it has deep midnight blue sea with fierce waves, very fierce waves. and. Um, because they have these characteristics, there are a few spots that are famous for surfing. You might have heard of Surfy Beach in Yangyanggung County. There, there's a picture I've taken before. I went there with my dog. It's also a dog-friendly uh, beach as well. Surfy Beach, 
they offer one day classes for surfing. So for people who haven't tried out surfing before, uh, you don't need any equipment. They rent them all for you. And um, although it was my first time trying out surfing in there, uh, I was able to stand on the board on the first day. Maybe I am athletic after all. So I strongly recommend to those seeking new adventures. And then last but not least, there is Namhae, the southern coast. You know that the most famous beaches are located in Namhae, the beaches in Jeju Island, it's famous. Yeah, you can see in the picture here, emerald green, transparent and shallow compared to the eastern coast. Eastern coast tends to be deeper. And here it's all shallow, so nice to go with your babies. And there's a beach made up of um, entirely coral sands in Udo Island. That's not popcorn, that's coral sands. You know corals, right? And because of that, um, these coral sands are designated as natural monument number 438. And although they're very pretty there, please do not take them with you at home because they're protected and it's forbidden to take them outside of this beautiful place. So I've explained to you all three seasides of the Korean Peninsula. Which side would you prefer? Oh, someone mentioned Hyeopje Beach. You're a professional in Korean beaches, aren't you? Hyeopje Beach is in Jeju Island. I actually used to live in Jeju Island for four months back in year 2014. I was a hippie and I used to just collect shells all day long. And Hyeopje Beach, I know, uh, has a lot of tourists because of the scenery. Someone also mentioned Haewonde Beach. Haewonde Beach in Busan is famous, yes. Haewonde Beach is also quite famous for, I, I'm not sure if I can say this in the live show, but there are a lot of young men and women there. And uh, um, when they want to talk to each other, when they want to uh, make new friends, let's call it that way, uh, they go to Haewonde Beach for some new adventures. So if you want some romantic new adventures, go to Haewonde Beach in Busan. So that was the very last part of today's show already. The last pop quiz on Korean sound words um, is slightly silly, but I'm kind of proud that I prepared this silly question. It's a very entertaining one. The question is, which of the following sounds do not express sadness? Anyone who gets this answer will win US dollar, $30 Amazon gift card. Uh, number one, I will read them out to you first, emotionlessly. Um, number one, ue. Number two, huk huk. Number three, ehu. Number four, ong ong. Number five, hing. I try to sound uh, dry as possible with no emotions involved. Can you get the right answer? Just in case it was a bit too difficult without the emotions, I'll try again with acting. Which of the following sounds do not express, do not express sadness? Number one, wek. <laughs> Number two, hook hook. Number three, ayo. Number four, oh no. Number five, can you guess the answers? Do we have answers now? Thea Wong said, hook hook. Hook hook is the sound of sadness. Hook hook is hook hook. And then number one. Oh, number one. Someone's got it right. Hi, hello, HM. You got the answer right. It's number two. Number one, sorry. Number one. Wick. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I say it, can you guess what wek means? What does it refer to? Wek. <laughs> You're so funny, haha. <laughs> Thank you. Best voice actress. Thank you, AdruCast. <laughs> uh, someone said, oh, Tokan Eli, Eli in Korea said, oh my god, do number four again, please. Number four. <laughs> number four is more like wailing. Remember, number two, hook hook is just like hook hook, sobbing, sob sob. Number four, ong ong is like wailing. Ong ong. <laughs> yes, you're right. Number one, ue is the sound of puking. Corner um, showed us the puking emo emoji. You're very right. 
it's not the sound of animal, it's the sound of human beings when they feel like puking or vomiting. And uh, for instance, uh, did you like the silly questions? Do we have time for another silly question? Would you like another silly question? I've actually prepared the second one for a Korean sound. And uh, the question is, which of the sounds is not used when someone is surprised or impressed? Number one, I will try this again without acting. Ooh, wah. Number two, ee, yar. Number three, ooh. Number four, ee, ya. Number five, ah, ya. Which of these sounds do not show um, someone who is surprised or impressed? I'll try it again with acting. Number one, Whoa. Number two, your. Number three, oh. Number four, yeah. <laughs> Number five, ayah. Now that was easy. The answer was number five, ayah. Molly Hinarista, congratulations. You have won the US dollar, $30 Amazon gift card. The answer that does not express a uh, feeling of su surpriseness or um, um, impress impression was aya, because aya is the sound word you would use when you're hurt. So for instance, if you bumped into something, you would be like, aya, aya, aya. Well, that was it for the silly questions. And we've also answered all six questions already. Did you have fun while learning about Korean culture, sports, and tourism? Thank you all for your participation. It was really fun talking with all of you. And uh, have a great week. Bye. Bye. This was Hee and it was all about K.